This is a tutorial on how to play multiplayer GameCube games using Dolphin Emulator via the feature Netplay. If you already have Dolphin and know how to play games on it, you can skip to this timestamp here. Everyone else, follow along. What is Netplay? Netplay is a feature on some video game emulators that allows people to play multiplayer console games via an emulator with other people in different parts of the world, much like an online game. It uses the internet to connect up to three other players to a host to virtually fill all four ports the original console supported. Before starting, recommended minimum system requirements is as follows. Graphics card, NVIDIA GTX 650 or AMD Radeon 7850 or higher. CPU, quad core, either Intel i5 4000 series or starting as low as the 3450 in the 3000 series, or AMD's Ryzen 3 1200 or higher. I know this AMD chip isn't really an equivalent, but that's what they recommend. A more equivalent CPU in general will be AMD's FX8000 series, such as 8320, 8350, or 8370. 4GB of DDR3 RAM. Operating frequency doesn't really matter because DDR3's lowest speed available is pretty good. And Windows 7 or later. To see your PC's hardware info, right click the bottom of your screen, commonly referred to as the taskbar, and click Task Manager. Then click the Performance tab. At the top of the list, you'll see your CPU. Check your data here, and refer to my recommended specs as we continue. Right under that is your system memory, your RAM. It will say something like 3 out of 8 gigs, 38%. This indicates how much RAM your OS and background and other currently open applications are using to operate out of the total amount of RAM available you have. You can also see your total amount of RAM here. And at the bottom of this list, you'll see your GPU. It should be labeled something along the lines of NVIDIA GeForce, or AMD Radeon, or AMD Vega. This is your graphics card. If it says anything other than these two, it's likely what you have listed is either Intel or AMD integrated graphics, which is far worse than dedicated graphics, though still possible to utilize in some 3D tasks. If you want to try and use integrated graphics, anything older than Intel HD 4000 series is not supported. And as far as I can tell, AMD integrated graphics is not recommended. Once you've identified your PC's hardware, carry on with the next step. Downloads. Before downloading, I would recommend going into your browser menu, clicking on settings, typically it will be either three dots, three lines, or a cog. And under downloads, you may have to go under advanced settings, Select Always Ask Where to Save Files. To get started, you'll need three things. The emulator itself, and I would only recommend the latest stable version, 5.0, at the time of making this video, as it is more reliable than the development build and is simpler to work with. Link in description. As well as a file archiver such as WinRAR to extract games, more on that later. Link in description. Just get the latest beta release. And you will also need the video game of your choice. The most reliable website for ISOs and ROMs is Emu Paradise. Link will also be in the description. For this example, I'll be playing Super Monkey Ball Europe and Mario Party 5 USA. Once you've downloaded your games of choice, you will need to go find where your game downloaded, which defaults to your downloads folder on your main drive if you did not change its location when initially downloading. If you don't know where you put your games and for some reason they're not in your downloads folder, go back into your browser and press Ctrl J. 
This will bring up a list of all your downloads and an option to show where the files have been downloaded with the Show in Folder or Open Containing Folder option. Once you have found your game, you will need to extract it with WinRAR. Right click it and click Extract Files. This will bring up a dialog where you can choose where your games go. I would recommend making a folder anywhere outside your Downloads folder. If you simply don't care where your files go, then click Extract here. I would recommend deleting the first file you downloaded since you can send the extracted files to your peers. You can tell which is the first file because its file size will be smaller. Once your extraction is complete, open Dolphin and have your settings match mine. Paths, it tells you right there, ISO directories. That means in this box you should see the address or addresses of where you keep all your games. I would not recommend more than one folder for any reason, but that's up to you. You just need to add multiple directories. Assuming you have nothing written here, click Add and go find the folder where you're keeping your games. Then click Select Folder. Advanced doesn't matter. Click OK. Do not just close the window. Click refresh a couple times to populate the main menu with your games. You should see your games here assuming they aren't broken and have been extracted. Now click graphics. Use the 3D11 backend and make sure your adapter is your graphics card and not your CPU. If you have more of a potato PC, try using OpenGL. Or if neither of those seem to be working, try the 3D12 backend. 3D11 should be working with the recommended specs given though. Anti-aliasing, the worse your PC, the better you're off with the option closest to the top of this list. Same with anisotropic filtering. Those last two options just leave closer to the middle or a little bit under. Controllers. I would recommend any USB controller you're comfortable with. If you have an official Nintendo Wii U GameCube adapter, you'll be happy to hear Dolphin directly supports that device, as well as the Mayflash adapter under Standard Controller. Make sure it's switched to PC. Configure your controller by clicking the GameCube buttons and pressing the corresponding buttons on your controller. If your controller supports rumble, you can also configure the rumble. With your controller plugged in, select constant, or the option that looks like it resembles the most physically balanced rumble option. In one case for my Xbox One controller, I'd like to test and select both the L and R rumble. Click OK on the remaining dialogs. For the person hosting, you will need to find your memory card to send it to your friends. Go to Config and the GameCube tab and click the Browse button, the three dots beside the memory card. This should bring you right to where your memory card is. If you don't see a memory card slash raw file, open your game with Dolphin and make enough progress to create some saved data. Eventually, you should be prompted to format a memory card. This is what enables your computer to actually create saved data for your games. Once you have some data saved, Dolphin will let you know with a message appearing over the game where the data has saved. You want to remember that address. Exit the game and try clicking Browse again. If you still don't see any memory cards, go to the directory that just displayed on Dolphin for the save progress you just made. You should see a file called something like memorycarda.usa. Double click the file or click once, then click open. 
And you can also move your memory card if you want by cutting the raw file, Control X, and pasting it where you want. Now in order for Netplay to work, all users must have the exact same version of Dolphin, the game, and memory card. The most reliable way to ensure all players have the same versions of everything is by having the host use a file sharing website such as Google Drive, Mega, or JumpShare, which all need an account to upload files, but do not need an account to access the link. The reason you would want to do this instead of just giving them the link to the website you used is because it's possible the file was updated or changed, so the host giving the other players their exact files will guarantee consistency. Once everyone has the same versions of everything, everyone will need to also ensure their Dolphin main menu here is populated by following the previously mentioned steps under the Config option and Paths tab, as well as the steps it takes to load the memory card the host gave you. The rest of everyone's config and graphic settings must also be the same. Renaming ISO and memory card files isn't particularly harmful, but is absolutely advised against, as it will cause a complete desync in all future NetPlay sessions. If you're going to rename a file, make sure you do so before giving that file to anyone. Once you know your game works, click Tools and start Netplay. Direct connection is a little less reliable and should only be used on a local network like in one's home. To use direct connection, the host will need to forward their IP address, so only share this info with people you trust. To find your IP address, go to the Start menu, click Search, type CMD, and open the command prompt. Then type ipconfig and look for your IPv4 address. The host will then need to send their IP address and port number to the other players. Then check off forward port and click host. The other players will then have to choose direct connection and simply paste the host's IP and port in each spot respectively. However, I would recommend changing this whole option to Traversal Server. If you're hosting, click Host and double click your game, or click Once then Host. I would recommend a buffer between 11 and 18. A buffer basically synchronizes all the players better and reduces lag. However, the higher the buffer, the more of an input delay there will be. So anything higher than 20 may be noticeably difficult to play with. Copy the room ID and send it to your friends. To connect to a host, paste the room ID in the host code and click connect. If you want to save progress, the host must check off write to memcard slash sd before starting the game. When saving, data will be saved to all players, so make sure that that's what everyone wants and you don't overwrite their saves for games they also have. Now the host must click start. If all has gone well, the game window will pop up for all players. And assuming everyone's game runs smoothly, that's it. Just configure the virtual ports and the buffer if need be, and you are done.
effect by the R7 from me. Now for you more keen viewers, you may remember that I mentioned two different country of origin games. That was to let you know that not all games will have the same origin when looking for or downloading your games, which will cause your computer to produce as many memory cards as you have different country of origin saved data for your games. This was also to let you know to not worry about loading the quote unquote proper memory card every time you play games from different countries. Dolphin automatically takes care of that problem so long as all memory cards are in the same folder.